welcome to episode 74 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 11th of July. So I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I spoke to you and hopefully it's not quite as hot as my craft room is today. <laughs> I'm dying to open the window so it's probably going to be quite a quick one so that I don't die of heat exhaustion. <laughs> that may be exaggerating slightly. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, you can find me on Instagram, Ravelry and Facebook as Craft House Magic and I have my own website, crafthousemagic.co.uk where I sell my handmade things but also you can find the show notes. So if you go to the website, go to the menu bar and click blog and show notes and that will lead you um, to a page where it shows all my show notes for all the podcasts and you can go back as far as a couple of years if you want to. Um, and there is a couple of posts I, I blogged years ago as well before I started doing the podcast um, if you want to have a look at those as well <laughs> so anyway I'm getting off point here there's we've got a meetup coming up on the 21st of July in Norwich if you'd like to come and say hello it'd be lovely to meet you so that's the 21st of July in Norwich City in the place called the Lamb Inn so we've changed it um, from the previous venue to a, a pub basically <laughs> it is a nice pub though so don't worry it's got some nice sort of Sunday dinners and some desserts as well if you're into that sort of thing like me um, but we're meeting from 12 o'clock till 3 in the afternoon um, in the Lamb Inn and the Lamb Inn is situated just off Gentleman's Walk um, and it's basically, you, to get to it you need to go through an alleyway that's next to Pretty Porter um, on Gentleman's Walk and it says the Lamb Inn above the alleyway so it should be quite easy to find alternatively it is opposite the back entrance to Debenhams, the other entrance to it is um, and that's probably a bit more obvious, it says the Lamb Inn above that as well so it's got a, a quite a nice courtyard outside but we have got a table upstairs inside just in case it's rainy or anything anyway I'm blabbering on about that so do come over to the Ravelry group um, and say if you wanted to come and join us just to give me an idea of numbers it would be really nice if you could come and say hello <laughs> Right, I've, we've got the summer sock along going on in the Ravelry group as well. So any pair of adult socks that you're knitting, even if you've done one sock already, come and join in. There's a finished objects thread and a discussion thread over in the Ravelry group and I will be drawing prizes from both. So don't forget to join in the discussion thread as well as the finished objects thread. Um, I've got my new sock pattern that came out a couple of weeks ago called the Country Garden Socks so um, if you're knitting those definitely come and join in with those in the thread as well it'd be lovely to see um, how yours have turned out I've got a couple of pairs of socks on the needles at the moment um, I've got a new cast on as well so um, I'll show you in just a moment so today we have knitting, some spinning, because of course it's Tour de Fleece and I had to join in this year. <laughs> um, we've got some bobbin lace, some sewing, well kind of sewing, not really sewing, basically cut out. <laughs> so I shouldn't really call it a sewing section. Um, a blast from the past, another, well a few of my nanny's dresses from the same pattern. Some um, an Ask Me Anything question um, from a lovely lady called Sharon and some information on my shop update at the end. So let's get to the knitting. Ooh. Right, so first of all, I finished the latest of my sock tubes <laughs> that I finished off. It starts and finishes with a 2x2 two two rib. Um, and I basically like to do these because sometimes you just need to keep knitting and not have anything to think about. Especially if you're doing cinema knitting, a lot of this um, sock tube has been knitted at the cinema, so that's really handy. So the colourway is um, neon splash pink, and it's a twisted limon colourway. Beautiful self striping, and it was the most gorgeous gobstopper ball as well. And it's a 7525 superwash merino and nylon. And there's 420 metres um, to the ball. So if you haven't checked out Twisted Limone, um, beautiful, beautiful gobstopper balls that she sells. So there we go. We've got a finished, another finished sock tube. I thought that I would show you that now I've got three of these that I need to sort out. <laughs> I've got those ready to make socks with. And I'm going to split each of these tubes into two pairs of socks. Um, 
and quite a few people have asked me to do a tutorial on how I split my sock tubes into socks so I will do one of those and I will start it this afternoon I'm not quite sure whether I'll split it into several tutorials just so that you can find a particular part um, easily might be worth me doing that well I'll see how it goes when I start recording this afternoon and um, hopefully by the time I finished all those tutorials these will be six pairs of socks that'll be very exciting <laughs> right so that's project number one. I've done a couple of squares on my Cozy Memories blanket that I showed you last week. Last week I managed to do five squares, but this week I've only managed to get two done, I'm afraid. I've got this beautiful, bright, fluorescent green pink, um, and there's a bit of sort of cream and darker green coming through there. But it's a felt fusion yarn, and it's in the Whoville colorway. And I think that's absolutely perfect um, to represent Whoville. Now this one here is, I suppose it's sort of Christmassy, so Whoville is out of the Grinch isn't it, so um, that's Christmassy and this one's Christmassy as well, so we've got a bit of Christmas in July. <laughs> so this is the gingerbread colourway from Lay Family Yarn, so me and Kelly did a collaboration, it must be a couple of years ago now, uh, where I did a bag and she dyed some beautiful yarn up to make some socks, so... And there we go. I think we've got the last three squares look a little bit Christmassy, don't they? So we've got a bit of Christmas in July going on. <laughs> oh dear. Right, so that's my Cozy Memories blanket. Hopefully next week I should be able to get a whole row done. I do love to get a row done. And it just, why it gives me so much pleasure to finish a row on a blanket, I don't know. <laughs> oh dear. So, on the needles project number three, I've been working on my country garden socks. So I'd finished one, um, ready to photograph for the pattern that I published a couple of weeks ago. I'd actually knitted this in some different yarn as a test and then I dyed this up specially. And this is the English Country Garden colourway. Um, if you didn't watch last week's episode, the or, or the week before, this part here is supposed to represent the trellis on the fence in an English Country Garden. And then you've got butterflies flying all the way around the leg. Um, and then I designed a heel called the lawn heel. Um, which is supposed to represent the lawn in an English country garden. And of course, I had to name the yarn English Country Garden, which is a pale sort of sky, sky blue with some pink and purple flecks um, to sort of represent the flowers in a country garden. And then what else could I call the green but green, green grass of home? <laughs> so I've got, I think I'd done to the trellis on the last episode, I have finished the leg of the sock in the butterfly um, pattern and then I've just started doing the heel flap at the back. Um, so they're coming along nicely. So one of my test knitters, Lorraine, did a beautiful shorty version of the Country Garden socks. Um, so I might have to cast on some of those after. I might even have enough of this yarn to do some shorty socks afterwards, um, as long as I do sort of contrast heels and toes. We'll see. I like to use up all every little scrap of yarn. <laughs> So lastly on my needles is a new cast on and it's a pair of socks and what better time to cast on another pair of socks is it's the summer sock along so needed more socks on the needles. <laughs> So this is a gorgeous pattern um, and it's the Pebbles and Pathways pattern by Mars from the Hey Brown Berry podcast. You must watch Mars's podcast. She has got such a calming voice um, and at the moment she's just published a video on how she was sort of... Um, picking yarn and knitting up samples to make a jumper with. So that was really interesting. Um, anyway, off the point, <laughs> this is a beautiful pattern. It's got some cable detail on the front. So this is the front of the sock and some lovely squishy garter stitch. And it's a toe up, which I don't always go for. I tend to pick up things that are top down socks, but you know, I really do like a top toe up sock. I should do more of them. Um, and the yarn I've chosen is actually one of my own hand dyed yarns and it's in The Way You Make Me Feel and it's inspired by Michael Jackson's song. So there we go. So it's a turquoise yarn with flecks of like a purpley blue in there and I thought that that would be brilliant for a pair of socks for Adam to wear because he always needs more socks. He wears them, I don't know, he just wears them all the time even when it's hot. <laughs> so that's how they're looking so far. 
absolutely love these cables. I think I did the cables in the wrong direction though because I looked at the pattern and I was at the hairdressers, thought I knew what I was doing and then I've done the cables in the opposite direction. But you know, no one's going to notice so don't tell anybody. <laughs> I'm sure, hey, I could do one foot going one way and another foot going the other, couldn't we? <laughs> oh dear. So there we go. That's my sort of new cast on for this week. I am love, I just, I do love a good blue yarn as well. So the more blue things <laughs> on the needles, the better really. I think most of the things that I own are blue. Does anybody else have that? <laughs> Right, anyway, on to the next bit. So now we've got the spinning section. So because it is tour de fleece, I've been trying to do more spinning. Um, so I've had lots of lovely inspiration um, from Jade from the So Perfect Pearls podcast and Grace from Babbles Travelling Yarns and Mina Philip from the Knitting Expat podcast. So if you're really into spinning and you haven't checked those out, well, you probably would have done before you've checked my podcast out, to be honest. <laughs> Um, so I've been watching those and getting lots of inspiration. Um, I, so I've got some targets. So number one is that I'm going to try and do 30 minutes of spinning every day during the Tour de Fleece. And that's during what, when the Tour de France is on. So I think it was the 6th or 8th. Was it the 6th or 8th of July? One of those days. And it goes to the 28th of July. So I'm going to tr really try and get... Um, get some improvement in my technique going and trying a few new things. So one of the things um, that I want to do, like I said, is do 30 minutes of spinning every day. Number two, I'd like to go back to doing some more long draw. So later on in the month, I hope to get some of that done as well. Um, number three, I'd, I, my target was to have, have a go at some um, plying on the fly with my drop spindle, which I have had a go at and I'll show you in a minute. So those are my sort of um, three targets that I want to do and hopefully accomplish those by the end of the Tour de Fleece. Um, so I think half an hour for me is probably a good amount of spinning to do each day because I want to do other things as well. Um, but it just makes sure that I actually get some done each day and keeps the inspiration going um, to do more spinning and get more ideas. So what have I been spinning? So I'd picked up this lovely silk and merino um, top, that's the word, <laughs> from um, a shop in Shrewsbury called You and Ply. That's the one. My brain's just fried today. <laughs> um, and I bought it a couple of, I oh, must have been it's about six months ago, me and my friend Rachel were in there and I had to pick some of this up. So, hi Rachel. So it's saying hello to all the people this time. <laughs> but this is how it comes. You can see the bits of silk in there with some various colours of sort of bluey greeny shades. Perfect. All of my fleece, I've decided, is about this colour because I made a pile of it and most of it is this colour. <laughs> or something very similar. So I've been starting to spin that. And I've spun a bobbin so far, and that's how it looks. I'm trying to get my spinning as consistent and as fine as I can. Um, so we'll, you'll see how it comes out when it's been plied. It always looks much better when it's in this form. And then when I ply it, I think, oh. <laughs> we'll see. I think more practice always makes things better, doesn't it, anyway? So um, we shall see how I shall get on with that. So I've there's half of it spun here. And I also have some on a second bobbin that's still on my spinning wheel, but I still have this much to ply, uh, this much to spin into singles, and then I need to ply it together. So I'm just going to do a two ply yarn, and I've just been spinning it sort of randomly because these colours are quite close, and I didn't think I needed to worry too much um, about sort of things pooling or barber pulling too much. I'm sure it'll sort of blend all into a nice bluey greeny mess, really. <laughs> So that's how I'm getting on with that one. So I showed you in last week's podcast that I'd received a beautiful drop spindle, but a Turkish one, um, which the lovely Lou Lee had sent me to try. And I am loving this so much, in fact, that I made Adam 3D print me a second one, <laughs> which is this one. So this is made out of PLA, 
which I can't remember what it stands for right off the top of my head, but PLA is made from um, basically plant matter, which has been made into um, this polymer material um, so that it can be printed. And this is actually biodegradable. Um, I don't know the rate of degradation, <laughs> so I'll have to work that out, but it is biodegradable compared to um, like ABS plastic isn't biodegradable and that's made from oil. So this is the best type of plastic that you can 3D print with. So it's the same principle as the wooden one. I must admit, I do prefer um, spinning with the wooden one. It's got a really nice weight to it. This is much lighter, but I think if I'm spinning things like cotton and things like that, this lighter one will be sort of ideal. And I've been doing some plying on the fly. So I spoke to you just a moment ago. <laughs> I don't know why I phrased it like that. I, I've just been telling you about how I wanted um, to try plying on a drop spindle, which I've never done before. So I've looked out for a few YouTube videos to teach myself to teach myself how to do it, and I had a go. So I've been spinning some cream fleece which was a Shetland roving that I'd picked up from um, Edinburgh Yarn Festival um, earlier this year so I'd done about seven grams and I decided right I'm going to ply this so I tried I had to go apply it on the fly I made um, so I put all the singles onto my right hand which was probably a bit much really seven grams of singles onto my hand in a butterfly technique <laughs> just wrapping it around my hand <laughs> And then I plied it all at the same time, which really I should have plied some and then spun some more singles and then plied some more, if that makes sense. Um, if you have done ply on the fly before, you'll know what I mean. Um, so when I plied it, it looked like this. I think actually that it could have done with a bit more spin. I just needed a little bit more practice on doing that, but it's not too bad. I think it, it's a usable yarn, so that'll be okay. It is a bit lumpy, but I think that the roving that I was using was um, slightly more awkward to, to get a nice smooth spin um, than a normal top. But there we go. I also started spinning um, one of the coloured fleeces that I got in my stash. Um, I can't remember which one it was, I just grabbed a bit of it but that's how it looks when I've plied it up and I actually thought that this came out a bit better once it was plied if you can see um, how that twist is looking. But I only did a little bit of that one um, but that's how I've got on so far so I'm not particularly good at plying on the fly just yet Maybe, maybe next week, if I get a bit better, I might film some of myself, but I felt so awkward doing it. <laughs> I didn't film any of it, so we'll see. But at least that's one of my targets I've sort of hit already for the Tour de Fleece. So that's what we're good. I'm really pleased about that. So I think some people are doing absolutely tons and tons of spinning, but because I got so many other interests, I wanted to sort of stick to half an hour and not go too mad. I think normally when I sort of say, right, I'm going to do some spinning, I try and do sort of 15 minutes a day. So half an hour is still an improvement on that. So there we go. <laughs> I tend to spin quite a lot for a while and then I end up putting my wheel away and then forget about it for a while. But um, hopefully I can keep on doing a little bit, especially with the drop spindle. I've been having it next to that kettle lay like you suggested. It definitely makes a difference so you can just get it out and have a little bit of a spin. And ha having, act having this on the go actually gives me more inspiration to spin on my wheel as well. So all good things. Right, so that's my spinning. Oh, I know I wanted to say again. Um, so before I stop talking about the spinning, I wanted to reiterate that this lovely spindle is from Kerry Spindles and I will leave a link to the um, Etsy shop in the show notes as well. So that's Kerry Spindles on Etsy and oh, this is beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, so there we go, that's the spinning section. We've got bobbin lace next. So actually, earlier today, I recorded some footage of me showing my bobbin lace cushion. Rather than me holding it up awkwardly here, I've actually got the camera pointed down at it. So I'm gonna put that section in now. So this is how my bobbin lace is looking, close up. So it's supposed to be a swan. I'm not quite sure how good a swan it'll look in the end, but we'll see. So at the top here, um, this sort of ridge here 
is supposed to be sort of the contours of the head I think and I'm going to add the eye as a bead afterwards uh, just because I didn't think about it when I first started but I think a bead will look nice um, I'm adding and taking away pairs as I go to thicker and thinner areas so you can see how this area here is getting wider so I've had a couple more pairs there and on the thinner sections I've taken some away most of it is in whole stitch but this section here is in half stitch as you can see um, I'm going to leave the next bit until I go to my group and ask the lady who sort of teaches us um, how I'm supposed to work over this um, piece here but I'm pretty sure it's the same as I normally do I'm just going to double check but that's how I've gotten on so far so I hope you enjoyed looking at the bobbin lace bit. Um, hopefully I'll be able to actually ask my friend to find out where that pattern was from for the swan um, by next time. But we'll see. I'll see if she remembers. Um, so the next section is the sewing section. Well, I say sewing, but it's not sewing yet. It's basically cut out. <laughs> Can you guess what it is? It's a sleeve. So I've cut out some fabric to make just a normal Agnes t-shirt. So I've made loads and loads of these. But I thought this was in my stash. And I, th I looked at it and I thought, this needs to be worn. It's summery. It needs to be worn now. <laughs> so there we go. I cut out that in the same size as I normally do. Um, this is a beautiful quality fabric. So this piece of fabric um, I would picked up goodness I can't remember where I got it from but I will link it in the show notes this is an art gallery fabric um, that I picked up must have been a few months ago now before I went away on holiday but I thought I looked at it and I thought oh, this needs to be worn for summer this is a very summery fabric so I need to make it up um, right now this pink actually is a little bit more fluorescent in real life than it's coming up on screen so it looks really summery. So the fabric is an art gallery fabric and it is a Katrina Rossella and it's 95% cotton and 5% spandex and it's in Paparone's Crimson so I shall show you the salvage so that you can see what it is. There we go. Um, I will look up where I actually got it from and put the link in the show notes um, so that you can go and see if you can find any there. I'm not quite sure if they'll have any left but um, I remember it being a really good quality shop so they had lots of really nice things so it might be worth having a look in anyway. <laughs> so that's my sort of sewing which isn't really sewing. Hopefully next week I can show you something that's actually started to be sewn. <laughs> um, so next I have my blast from the past. So I have a set of six of Nanny's dresses that I think were made from all the same pattern. And I thought, as they're all the same pattern, it's nice to sort of see them in the same section of video. So I'm gonna get Barbara to do some twirls. Um, I think I might actually do a bit of more of a close up on each of the garments um, so that you can see them a little bit better. But first of all, I'll describe what the pattern of the dress is first. Barbara, will you come over and show us? So this is my favourite of the six dresses, the fabric anyway. And it's a gorgeous pinky purple print. I can imagine my nanny dancing away in this dress. <laughs> so it's got a nice um, round neck that's finished because it's all lined on the inside. It's got some princess seams all the way down to the front. Full length sleeve. This one's lined in the body but not the arms. Um, and then I've got zip coming down the back or princess seams coming down the back as well, which is a bit unusual. Um, there is some darts in the elbow there so that the sleeve fits nicely because it's a long sleeve. And it's one of the A-lines again because my nanny seemed to like A-line dresses. Oh, Barbara's having a bit of a wobble there. <laughs> so I'll have another little close-up in a minute, but I thought I'd show you a picture of my nanny and what she looked like. This is cheated a bit because this is from a wedding. I think it was one of my auntie and uncle's wedding days. Um, but my nan's in the middle there and my dad is in the photograph with his brothers. Um, and if you can see, that's my dad there. We might look a little bit alike. <laughs> Um, but how lovely she used to dress in the same sort of style dresses, very sophisticated. Um, but it seems like she always used to sort of dress like this, um, even if it wasn't a wedding. Perhaps not with the flowers in her hair, but lovely. 
Right, so Barbara, let's do a bit of a fashion show. This is a more of a summery version. It isn't lined at all and it's made out of a cotton material. But this one has actually got cuffs on um, with some beautiful covered buttons there compared to the other one just had plain sleeve. Again, this one's a bit tight on Barbara, but you can see how it's got the similar um, princess seams down the back and an A-line skirt. But I love those buttons on the cuffs. Really lovely. So this is another cotton material dress that isn't lined. Um, when I first saw it sort of hanging up on the coat hanger, I didn't really like the fabric, but actually I think that works really well. It's surprising sometimes how uh, material works better than you think in the real garment. This one has got um, buttons on the sleeves again. Um, this time they're not fabric covered ones, but they're sort of a shell material. Um, and the same again on the back. The, it's got the same sort of darts um, and a nice A-line shape. Poor Barbara is a little bit big for this one as well. This one's a lovely brown stripy number and it's made of a crimpoline fabric. Again, it's the A-line shape. But I'm very impressed with the pattern matching that's happening all the way down the dress here on both well, in all of the seams, really. Really impressed with those. The sleeves have got a dart up the side this time. There's no cuff on this one. But that's oh, really lovely. Barbara can just about fit in this because it is slightly stretchy material. But the pattern's the same all on the back as well. So there we go. This one's a plain version, same shape again. There is a dart on the side of the sleeve there to get it into shape. This is a softer version of a sort of crimpoline, I think. And then the back, um, same sort of shape again. Last but not least, it's a lovely red number. And this is made of a really thick wool and it actually feels a little bit itchy. So you can tell why it's been completely lined all inside and um, for the entirety of the skirt there. Um, but that's really nice. The arm again has got one of these side darts to give it a bit of shape and some movement and I'm afraid Barbara again is a little bit on the big side for this one but you get the idea of the shaping at the back there um, this one must have been quite precious because it did have a cover on it as well and there we go so that's the last ones from this pattern I do have a few more dresses to show you in the next couple of episodes so I hope you enjoyed seeing those thank you very much Barbara that was a lot of changes there. <laughs> so, um, I yes, like I said, I've got um, two more styles of dress to show you, one of which has several um, to show you, so that'll be interesting to see the different fabrics for the same pattern. If I find um, what that pattern is for today's set of dresses, I shall pop it in the show notes as well. So, next section is conversion. Been a bit naughty. <laughs> So I saw on Grace's podcast, Babbles Travelling Yarns, that she got one of these. It's a maker's keep and it's got, if you remember those things in the 80s, one of those slap bracelets. <laughs> um, but this has got a magnet on so you can put pins and things on. I'm just going to find some pins so that I can show you. You can put pins or stitch markers on there so that they're really easy to access. So um, I thought it'd be really good for sort of cross stitch, um, any sort of knitting or cabling. Lots of different things really. Dressmaking, I thought I would find that really useful. And I basically copied Grace with this colour because look at that colour, isn't it beautiful? <laughs> so I've picked up one of these and I 
actually purchased it from the loveliest yarn company uh, which is the lovely Michelle's shop she is such a lovely person so um, loveliest yarn company do a nice range of yarns um, and lovely little gadgets like this one and she will be at Fiberese I noticed um, on the list um, when I was looking at it last night so I will be going to Fibre East as well so don't forget to come and say hello if you see me um, I am actually going to, for two days so hopefully I'll get to see you <laughs> um, and I'll hopefully get to see Michelle as well so I'm really pleased I got this I haven't got it as the gadget for this day's uh, for today's sort of podcast because I wanted to sort of test it out a bit more first before I sort of give a better review whoops <laughs> better put it on my wrist it doesn't like being waved around there we go so that's my first confession which is a bit naughty <laughs> they are quite expensive but they um they are very sturdy um and i noticed that that really just stay sort of at the upright position on your wrist so i will give you a better review of that um when i've used it a little bit more so that's purchase number one purchase number two I bought some beads so there's a shop that I really like that does beads called crystals and ice I don't know if that's focused properly I will put the link in the show notes anyway it's crystals and ice uk and it's crystals dash and dash ice uk and they do really nice quality beads um, it annoys me so much that you get beads that aren't the same size or they're just you have put time into a project you really want them to be nice quality so these ones I've picked up are really lovely quality beads I know that I've purchased from crystals and ice before and I've always been pleased with the beads that I've purchased so this is size 11 and this is no that's the wrong so these these are size 8 and these are size 11 Miyuki beads and I was picking them to go with my um, bamboo kimono block that I'm doing to put in the centre of the cherry blossom flowers. Um, and I've actually auditioned these two now because, of course, when you're buying them online, you never know exactly what's going to go perfectly. But I think, actually, when you put that against the flowers, these lighter pink ones look better. So hopefully I'll get some uh, of those sewn on by the next episode. So that's not too bad of a confession. <laughs> Because it's Tour de Fleece, I've been obsessing over fibres and things and I actually bought this before last week and I forgot to tell you about it. So I bought a piece of carding cloth from a shop called Wingham Woolwork to make a blending board. So I know that Mina from Knitted Expat and Grace have talked about, uh, sorry, Grace from Babbles Travelling Yarns have talked about how they've made um, blending boards from a piece of carding cloth. So I shall put um, links in the show notes to both their podcasts, um, to both those um, videos if I can find them. You can buy a blending board um, from Wing and Woolwork made by um, Ashford, but it's £130 and you can get a piece of this um, carding cloth for £43. So I opted for the £43 carding cloth and to buy a chopping board to go with it. So I picked up this chopping board um, off um, an eBay shop, I think. I wanted one with a handle on so that... Gosh, it's heavy. <laughs> I wanted one to, with a handle on so that I could sort of carry that around and this is the one that I could find that was actually the right size and that was made of bamboo because bamboo is a sort of sustainable wood and I was trying to look for something that was a sort of as, um, as environmentally friendly as possible um, so I picked it so that it fits just about let me show you I haven't actually stapled it on yet, obviously, because I just showed it them separately. But that will fit on there nicely once I've actually stapled it. I'm just going to put this on the floor out of the way. <laughs> so I will be able to blend some fleece um, to sort of design my own yarn. So that will be fun. I also picked up a paintbrush. And this is from Wix. Because <laughs> I thought that the bristles seemed quite stiff. But it's also made of wood, so I like that. <laughs> so I picked that up from Wix to to actually um, push the fibres into the bris in, into the um, the carding cloth, if that makes sense. So that was I think that's all I've bought. It's not too bad. It is quite expensive. 
<laughs> bit naughty this week oh dear so hopefully i'll get adam to help me staple the carding cloth to the board tonight and they'll be able to start messing around with some fiber so we've just got two sections left of the podcast i've got the ask me anything section and also my information on my shop update just at the end so i had a lovely question from sharon who is from the scr1 tno is that right yep <laughs> the scr1 tno podcast hi sharon and she was asking me how do i sew my ends in when i'm doing crochet now I think this is a very good question because I don't know if I do it right. So I'm going to show you how I do it. And then I thought you guys could tell me how you do it as well. We could find out what the best way of sewing in ends in crochet really is. So I shall pop a clip here to show you how I sew my ends in. So I've threaded my end onto a needle. So normally if there's some sort of join, I tend to thread my end um, through here as much as possible so I'll probably go through these loops here like this pull the yarn through and then like in knitting I'll go to the other side of this V and then sort of come back in the same way if that makes sense Sometimes if I haven't got a join there, I will try and thread it through um, the crochet, crochet stitches um, in the line next to it. So I'll go um, sort of one side through a row of crochet stitches like this. Of course, I wouldn't do both of these things um, on the same sort of sewing. It's just another uh, example. But just for this instance, I'll show you both methods on the same piece of yarn. And then I'd skip the last thread that I've just gone into and then come back in the same direction um, through the same set of stitches, making sure that I've not gone right through um, the material, if that makes sense. So absolutely don't know whether this is correct or not. Um, be interesting to see what you've got to say. So is that how you do it? I'd really love to know because I have no clue whether it's the correct way or not. I've just kind of made it up. <laughs> so it'd be interesting to see what you do. So in the comments down below, um, let me know how you sew in your ends for crochet. Um, or we could open a thread in the Ravelry group if, if lots of people are interested. Um, so the last section is... Um, my shop update information. So my shop update for this week is basically consisting of the Christmas yarns that the colourways I brought out last year. So Jingle Bell Rock, Merry Christmas Everyone and Walking in the Air will be in the shop as well as my autumnal colourway which is Pumpkin Patch. Um, so those will be available in all my bases. So I've got a 75-25 Merino nylon, a BFL nylon which is 80% BFL 20% uh, nylon. We've got an MCN which is merino cashmere and nylon 80-10-10. I've got a Stellina base which is 75% merino, 20% um, nylon and 5% Stellina, 100% merino singles. I think that's it. <laughs> oh dear, I think I'm, I've, I've, I, need, I need a break now. It's been a long day. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Don't forget to look out for the videos um, on how I split my great big long sock tube into a couple of pairs of socks. It may be in one video or I may split it up into several. We'll see how that goes. Um, so I hope you have a lovely crafty week till next time. Bye!